Fulham are back in the Premier League and credit where credit's due, they have had a tremendous start given the circumstances. Their opening weekend they played against Liverpool and they drew 2-2. Arguably they could have got the three points as well in that game. And the following game week they played against Wolves and drew 0-0 as well. Obviously they've yet to pick up a win so far but that is going to be right around the corner if they carry on playing how they are. But in today's video we have put Fulham into the Premier League and by the end of this video we will make them the best team in the world. And we begin this rebuilding season 1 with just under 14 million. And as you guys can see, I have already updated this team. You've got the likes of Bird Leno in goal. You've got Mbabu, Issa Diop. And the big one, in my opinion, Cal Polinia, who is going to be an absolute dream to have in this rebuild. I'm calling it right now. Polinia is going to be the best play by the end of this rebuild. Hands down. But when you take a look at Fulham's side right now, it actually looks like it belongs in the Premier League. Obviously, you've got a couple of very low-rated plays, which we can definitely solve in this transfer window. However, overall, you can't really complain. But I know exactly what positions to buy for and I know exactly who I want in them positions. And in that transfer window we made a couple of pretty decent signings. But firstly we sent Nice Kens, Cabano and Rodrigo Munoz both out on loan. Not before buying Musa Gineppo for 6.3 million and we have gone and brought Dali Ali for 17.8 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to a close. It looks so good. I'm actually so happy with how this team looks right now and it's only the beginning of season one. Obviously there's some defensive issues. Rob Robinson 74 rated, Reed the CDM 75 rated, Adora Bioyo 75 rated, completely butchered that name but whatever. To be honest it's an insanely promising start to this rebuild, if we're starting the team like this, who knows what we can make it look like in a couple of seasons time. And we are halfway through the season now at 13th place in the league which is very goddamn respectable indeed. The good news as well, we're pretty far away from the relegation zone. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to a close, we didn't do anything in that window purely because we just we broke. But as you can see, it is worth it. Dali Ali, 81 rated. Gineppo, 77 rated. They both improved and they both improved quite significantly. Saying that though, there's been improvements all over the pitch. More notably speaking though, Paulinho, 84 rated. 26 years old as well. I'm telling you, by the end of this rebuild, he'll be our highest rated player by a mile. I've got a little bit of faith in Dali Ali becoming a world beater in this rebuild as well. I've got a feeling with a couple of good seasons under his belt, he'll get a good bit of form and his potential just skyrocket. To be fair guys, I don't intend on changing this front four anytime soon. The next thing I'll probably do is bring in another central defensive midfielder and then after that just work on the back four until I'm happy with it. But by the end of this season, if we are still 13th place or any higher, I will be over the moon with that. We have reached the end of the season and we have finished smack bang mid table. Joint on points with Arsenal as well. Only finishing below them because of goal difference but I don't care. Top 10 in the first season with Fulham in the Premier League. That is an achievement in half. And even even better, Chelsea went on to win the Premier League by four points, beating Liverpool to that spot. Come on, you blues! But it was Brentford, Brighton and Palace who did get relegated this season. Liverpool won the FA Cup. They also won the Carabao Cup. Nope. Leverkusen won the Europa League. And City won the Champions League. I mean, for the first season, the stats aren't too bad. Mitrovic, our top goal scorer, as you would expect, with 16 goals. Harry Wilson with 13 goals in three. It's decent, it's decent. I did expect a little bit more from Dali Alli this season. 7 goals, 11 assists, but it did go to 81 rated, which is pretty promising for the times to come. You've got Gineppo, 78 rated. He'll come definitely good in the next couple of seasons' time. And then the guy that I predict to be the best player in this team by a mile by the end of this rebuild, 85 rated by the end of the first season. He's definitely going to be the first one to reach 90 rated in this team. Our first season with Fulham in the Premier League was a massive success. A 10th place finish. I'm hoping that we can just continue to do as well as we did this season. And we begin this season with just over 4 41 and a half million in the bank. Now I want to leave the front four alone. They all improved quite well last season and all actually got pretty decent stats for the first season in the Premier League. I'm going to give them one more season and see how they get on and then go from there. And in real life, Zambo Anguissa has actually transferred to Napoli. I can't remember how much for, so in this transfer window, just to make things a little bit more realistic, we will be letting him go. I think we will be getting a replacement CDM for Reed though. Obviously, Reed's done pretty well, 27 years old, 77 rated, but with the money that we've got, we'd be daft not to utilise it. And then once we've done that, we'll probably go to look at the back line and see if we can't improve that a little bit more as well. It's safe to say we used the money pretty wisely in that transfer window. Firstly, we sold Zambo and Gisa to Arsenal for 26.1 million. We then signed Hector Ballerin to bolster the defence for 14 million. We then signed Argentinian fullback Nicolas Tagliafico for 24.7 million. And the best one, in my opinion, we brought Emre Chan for 28 million. And going into season two, this is how we have the team lining up. And it looks ridiculously strong compared to last season. These 
hardly any weaknesses in the team. There's only three players under 80 rated in the team, and by the end of the season, no doubt in my mind that'll be changed. I'm actually quite confident we can get top six this season. Obviously, that's an ask, but I reckon that with this team being young, it's still growing, still improving. There's no reason why we can't attain that goal. And we are currently halfway through season two with Fulham being sixth in the league. I told you guys we could actually pull this one off. We just need to maintain the form we've got right now. Maybe even improve it a little bit more. It'd be mint if we could get top four. Jesus Christ. But I am telling you now, we can get top six by the end of this season. I think I'm going to ruffle some feathers with what I've just done in that transfer window. We sold Kevin and Babu for just under 18 million. And we brought in Italian centre-back Juan Luca Mancini for 26.9 million. And we also included Tosin Adora Bioyo as a part of that deal. And this is now how the team looks going into the second half of this season. The only player that isn't 80 rated or above is Hector Bellerin. We could have expected that though, in fairness. But everywhere else, this team is as good as goal, quite frankly. Dali Ali as well. He's really impressed me. 83 rated at 26 years old. He's reviving his career and then some at Fulham. I'm telling you, boys, we can get top six with this team this season. Well, boys, at the end of season two, we have found ourselves inside the top six. How the hell we pulled this off, I'll never know. I know I said at the start of the season we could do it, but when you look at the company we're in, Man City, Manchester United, Chelsea, the bottle jobs, Liverpool, like, honest to God, we have outperformed in half this season. Plus Arsenal 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, though, it was Leeds United, Sheffield United, and Nottingham Forest who got themselves relegated this season. United won the FA Cup. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. Lazio won the Europa Conference League. Nope. Leverkusen won the Super Cup. And this time, it was Barcelona who won the Champions League. In fairness, our front four all packed themselves double-figure goals this season. I can't really complain that Harry Wilson, 81 rated, 16 goals, 11 assists. Mitro, 15 goals, 4 assists. Gineppo got himself 14 goals and 5 assists. Dalielli, 11 goals, 9 assists. And then Tagli, if he could get himself six goals, one assist from the fullback position, that's not too bad at all. Emre Chan as well, five goals, four assists, and then everyone else was pretty box standard, really. But the fact that we've got top six football in only season two, in a couple of seasons' time, imagine what we could do to this team. Holy shit, boys, we've been given just under 105 million to spend this season. Now, as much as I hate to say this, I think it might be time to move on Mitrovic and Wilson because Gineppo, he's improved left, right, and centre each season. However, Wilson and Mitro, they aren't really improving at the same rate as Gineppo is. And Deli Ali as well, he's leading that freaking front line. So I think it might be time to bring in a new striker, a new winger, and definitely a new fullback. And then we'll see where we are from there. Trust me when I say we made some moves in that transfer window. Unfortunately, we did end up selling the Serbian striker Alexander Mitrovic for 37.4 million. We also sold Harry Wilson to Newcastle United for just under 40 million as well. But we brought in the Dutch fullback Denzel Dumfries for 33.9 million million. We brought in Jamaican winger Leon Bailey for 45 million. And the big one, we put Patrick Schick for 80 million. And that leaves the team looking like this going into this season. It is a massively different team comparing this to last season. The team right now is, is scary. This team can compete. This team will definitely compete for a lot of things this season. I'm talking domestic cups, European competitions, as well as the Premier League. And speaking of European competitions, we are in Group C of the Europa League, joined by Galatasaray. Tassarai, Malmo, and Sham Rock Rovers. Now, I'd like to think that we could top this table quite easily, but I'd take second spot as well. Well, I'd say that's a pretty big success considering we only lost one throughout the entirety of that group stage, but realistically speaking, it was only a two-horse race. Ourselves and Galatasaray absolutely dominated Group C, and we quite easily make it through to the knockout stages of the Europa League. As well as doing well in Europe, guys, we are halfway through the season in the Premier League, and we are joint second alongside with Chelsea and Leicester City, only beating them by a goal difference at this point. Manchester City are pretty far ahead at the top of the table, seven points clear of ourselves, but at the same time, I am exceptionally happy with being second place at the halfway point this season. And in that transfer window, we sold Moussa Gineppo to Lazio for 51 million, but we did bring in Alan St. Maximan for 39 million. As well as that, we brought in Stefan Savic for 17 million. And this is how the team looks going into the Europa League knockout stage. Now, I actually think with this team, we could do damage in this competition, maybe even go on to win it. And also, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, I've brought in Alex and Maximan when Gineppo was better because Alan St. Maximan has higher potential than Gineppo. Gineppo already outreached his potential. Alan St. Maximan isn't even close to it, so I brought him in for cheaper and made a bit of a profit on Gineppo at the same time. But come the end of this season, I want Champions League football. No ifs, no buts. We have arrived at the end of this season and it is official. We have qualified for the Champions League in only season three of this rebuild with Fulham. We have done tremendously well 
from pretty much start to finish of this rebuild so far. And I love the fact that Spears are actually nowhere to be. Oh my god, Arsenal finished 8th and Spears finished 9th. Don't you just love to see it? And it was Pally, Southampton, Bournemouth who did get relegated. City won the FA Cup. No way in hell does this happen. Fiorentina won the Conference League. We picked up our first bit of silverware in this rebuild this season by beating Olympic Lyon 3-1 in the Europa League final, guaranteeing us Champions League football no matter what. This rebuild is getting a little bit annoying now. And Chelsea won the Champions League, so I suppose it isn't too bad after all. Jesus Christ, in terms of stats, I think Dali Alli's definitely won that this season. 33 goals, 9 assists from the central attacking midfielder position. That is beyond ridiculous. You've got Patrick Schick as well in his opening season with Fulham. 22 goals, 1 assist. St. Maximan got himself 12 goals, 9 assists. Emery Chan, 10 goals, 9 assists from the centre defensive midfielder position. Something brilliant. Munez from the subs bench, 10 goals, 2 assists. And then Leon Bailey had a shock of the season. 8 goals, 7 assists. Didn't really do as well as St. Maximan or Schick in that matter. But I suppose he's always next season. If he doesn't perform well next season and we don't win the Champions League in the first season, he will be getting moved on. Every single season so far in this rebuild, we've just improved, whether that be the team, whether it be the position in the Premier League, whether it be getting trophies, we've always improved. And hopefully next season, we can finish this rebuild and win the Champions League in only our first season entering the competition. I thought last season we had some budget to work with. This season, we've been given just over 154 million. Now, I think it's safe to say the front four is absolutely fine. We don't need to touch that. Patrick Schick, Dali Ali, Leon Bailey, St. Maximan, all high rated, all pretty decent in their positions. We're going to leave that as it is. On top of that, Emre Chan and Polina proved to be pretty decent together, so we're going to leave them as well. The only thing I really would like to improve this season, getting a new centre-back and hopefully a better keeper. We made some massive signings in that transfer window. Firstly, we brought in Spanish keeper Unai Simon for £48 million. And then we brought in the six foot five German giant Nicholas Schuler for £70 million. And that leaves the team looking like this going into our very first season in the Champions Champions League and I must admit I think we stand a pretty decent chance of going quite far into this competition I know that we may not have a chance of winning it obviously it depends on if we even get out of the group stage at this point but I actually think we'll do pretty well this season regardless and we are in group F of the Champions League joined by Barcelona Porto and Fenerbahce it's a pretty tough group when you think about it FC Porto are no joke neither of Fenerbahce Barca are most likely to be the favorites to go through top of the table I just hope that we get through to the knockouts I do not want our first time in this competition get cut short by not even getting out of the group stage. Well, we ended up topping the table after all that. We beat Barcelona to that top spot by goal difference. Jesus Christ. It literally was between ourselves and Barcelona. I give Porto and Fenerbahce a little bit more credit than they deserved at this minute in time. But I'm not bothered. We topped the table. Barcelona finished second, which means we are into the round of 16 and hopefully not against a ridiculously tough opponent like PSG. We are in the round of 16. Who's our opponent? It is Dortmund. That could go either way, to be honest. Honest. And halfway through the season, we are currently third in the league. We are only five points behind league leaders Liverpool. And quite frankly speaking, the title race is still wide open. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. We didn't do a single thing in that window purely because we were completely broke from the first one. I am ridiculously happy with how this team looks anyways. And I've got a feeling after our stint at the group stage, besting Barcelona, we can actually go all the way. But first, we have to get past Dortmund. Dortmund's team actually looks pretty sick. Haaland up top. Smithrow, Royce, Bowen, Gravenbirch, Gwen Doozy. Oh my god. We're actually in trouble here. Normally, when we play against Dortmund, we can definitely say our team's just a little bit better. But I actually say Dortmund's team's better than ours. But without further ado, let's find out. Let's get into this game away from home and see. Oh, I hate it when we draw so much. I hate it when we draw so much. One all going into the second leg. Are we about to get knocked out before our journey in the Champions League has even properly begun? Or are we going to extend our time in the Champions League and progress to the quarterfinals? Let's find out. Come on! Say Maximum and Tagliafico get those all-important goals that we needed to knock out Dortmund. We progress to the quarters. So we go from the German Giants to the Italian Giants in AC Milan. We're away from home at the San Siro. They have got Isaac. They have got Kimpembe, Grimaldo, Azur, Simica, Mainan, Tenali. It's a pretty decent team, but I'd actually say ours is far better, to be honest. And let's see if I am right. We're going to get into this game very quickly, and we are going to see... Oh, do I really need to say anything? The only team I know that could choke this right now is Tottenham Hotspur. 4-0 up 
at Craven Cottage. How the hell could we choke this? Like, let's, I mean, if we choke this, we do, there we go, 6-1, 2-1 on the night. We've absolutely demolished AC Milan, and we more than deserve our place in the semis after that. And the absolute tit himself, Polina, has got himself suspended for this game, meaning we are definitely at a disadvantage going up against one of the biggest challenges we've had this season, Manchester City in the semi-final. But when you actually take a look at both teams, we're actually pretty evenly matched, but it's all right me saying that. We've got to prove it. We're at Craven Cottage. Hopefully Fulham can pick up a very convincing win. We go 3-1 up into the second leg and surely to God, we are in the final. You know what? Even at 3-1 up, I still feel a little bit nervous going into this game. Purely because it's Manchester City. If it was 4-1, I'd be like, you know what? Fair play. But because it's 3-1, you can't sleep on him. You just can't sleep on him. So we are going to get into this game and hopefully we fit... We're in the final! 2-1 on the night, 5-2 overall. We have successfully booked our place in the Champions League final. It is freaking deserved as well. And on the 31st of May 2025, it will be PSG versus Fulham in the Champions League final. PSG, we've come up against them many, many times before. We have yet to actually lose a single game in a rebuild, which I find absolutely mental. I must just be too sick at the game. But before we get into the final itself, let's see how we've done elsewhere this season. Bloody hell, it was close at the top of the table, weren't it? Manchester City did end up becoming champions once again with 81 points. Then it was Liverpool with 79 points. Then it was ourselves with 78 points. And then realistically speaking, Chelsea were the closest ones to us with 76 points. And then it was Spurs, United with 66 points. And then where the hell are Arsenal? Hang on, where... <laughs> I love it when Arsenal finished at the bottom half of the table, man. And in the relegation zone this time, it was Huddersfield, Leeds United and Notts Forest. Liverpool won the FA Cup. We ended up winning the Carabao Cup, beating Newcastle United to do it. Levante won the Conference League. Inter Milan won the Europa League. And we did lose 2-0 to Chelsea in the Super Cup. Can we all just sit back and admire Dali Ali, the MVP of this rebuild? 60 games played, 29 goals, 11 assists, 40 in total goal contributions this season. 89 rated the revival of Dali Ali has well and truly happened. Then we have Saint Maxi Man who's gone up to 87 rated, bagging himself 21 goals, 17 assists. We've got Patrick Schick, 19 goals, 5 assists. Emre Jam from the CDM role, 18 goals, 9 assists. He's once again beaten Leon freaking Bailey in the goals tally, 16 goals, 8 assists. He's even got more assists than him, Leon Bailey, man. I swear to God, if we don't win this final, I'm selling your ass. What a season. Top 3. Carabao Cup winners. All we need to do now is win the Champions League and it would have completed a remarkable season in Season 4. And PSG's team, like any other time we faced off against them, is ridiculous. The front three of absolute nightmares in Neymar, Mbappe and Kulisevsky, Benacar, Neves, McTominay in the midfield three, McTominay. I must admit, if he's anything to go by in real life, he is absolutely atrocious. That man can't pick a freaking pass out to save his life, can he? Then you've got Hakimi, Marquinhos, Supermakanu, Berashishe, and Donnarumma in goal. And this looks to be one hell of a Champions League final. But that is enough talking. I'm ready, you're ready, the players are ready. It is time to get into the game. It is PSG versus Fulham at the Estadio Metropolitano in the Champions League final.
Kulosevsky loses to Tagliafico, and we are going to go on the counter-attack here. If we can get a good ball, oh, if we can get a good return ball, make it not too late. That's a beautiful ball. There's nobody with it in the same maximum, though. Check. We've got, oh, we've got no one up. And that's offside, isn't it? That's freaking offside. Where are our players? They're all being mocked. Where's the movement? Patrick Schick is on the ball. We've found LNC Maximan. We're going to do a 1-2 with them, Ray Chan. Oh, hang on. Are we? Yes, I think we are. We're going to pass it back to St. Maximan. We've lost Akimi. Schick. Oh, no, that's Chan. Sorry. Okay. We get Schick on the ball. We find Dumfries. This is good bit of play. This is a very good bit of play. We find... Professional footballer can't hit a first-time low-driven cross into the back of the net. Are you taking the piss game? Emre Chan has found Tagliafico. Tagliafico with the ball in the... Oh, for goodness sake. I know what I want to do, but I just can't do it because PSG are that good. We've got Alancy Maximan on the ball. He's got a bit of room to run into. Oh, my God! What a goal from Alancy Maximan. Pitch Perfect hit, top right bins. Oh my god, I'll see Maximan Gineppe wouldn't have done that. Oh my god. Let's just take a quick look at this. He gets a bit of room. He hits it, bends it like Beckham. Oh my god. Look at that for a strike. Top right bins beating Donnarumma. Oh, I'm happy with that. We are 1 0 up against Paris Saint Germain. And it was going to take something special to break the deadlock in this game. And that was something freaking special. For goodness sake, don't let him do that to you. Tackle him! No, don't you dare pass it again. Don't. Thank God for that. We were finally able to do something about that. Oh, my God. No. And Bappe's just turned me like I'm an absolute fucking moron. He's just done me like a cone on a football training pitch. And he's just made it one all just like that. How simple was that? And every single day, Mbappe's scoring that. Like, what can you do against that? Kulosevsky versus Tagliafico. Kulosevsky is getting the better of... Oh, no. What a save. Unai Simon, what a save. Head on that, head on that, head on that. Good. Sir Maximan win that. Sir Maximan has won it. Deli Alley. He's got the ball. Can we find Schick? Schick. Pick this out properly and it's 2-1. Oh my god, we picked him out. We're going to make this 2-1 on the counter-attack on the 41st minute. Beautifully placed pass by Patrick Schick into St. Maximan, cutting straight through both defenders. And St. Maximan is not missing from there. We make it 2-1. Neymar's on the ball. He's just found another... Ma oh, look at that. Look at that defending. And that is the half-time whistle. We're going to the half-time break. 2-1 up. Emre Chan's found some space to run into. No one's really closing him. Well, they are now. We've found Alan C. Maximan. He's on for a hat trick himself. You know who Alan C. Maximan is with the brace in the first half. Emery Chan back in C. Maximan. C. Maximan. Oh, I'm gone. Dali Ali! Look at that. What a start to the second half that was. 50 minutes into the game, we are 3 1 up. PSG are dead in the water at the minute. That was a beautiful bit of passing play. Alan C. Maximan picks it up here, tries the shot. Dali Ali gets it on the rebound. Chest, volley, left foot. Bottom right corner, Don Ruma doesn't stand a chance. And we are so close to being the champions of Europe. Leon Bailey's giving it to Denzel Dumfries. Can we get the return? No, we can't because Dumfries can't pass to save his life, apparently. PSG are playing very high press. We can capitalise on this if we really wanted to. Leon Bailey is through. Look at this for a bit of play. And what we're going to do here, we're going to... We're going to... How the hell did I fuck that up? How the hell did I just fuck that up? Oh my god, what a dick. How the hell did I just mess that up? I wanted to sweat it to St. Maximan. He didn't exactly get into a position where I could sweat it to him. Leon Bailey didn't shoot. He didn't control it well either. And somehow we're still 3-1. Oh my god, what a tit. What a tit. Gotta be careful. We might be 3-1 up, but all it takes is one goal conceded to get them back into the game. Good tackle of Fico. He's not the fastest in the world, but it'd take a lot to knock him off the ball. Look at this. Look at that for a return. Oh, we couldn't quite control it. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll tell you what, PSG are playing with fire. They are playing with fire at the minute with us. I'm telling you, and we can get Alex St. Maximan. His hat trick right now. We have got Alan St. Maximan, his hat trick in the 74th minute. If anybody on this pitch deserves it, it is him. He has been outstanding in this game. Picks it up, takes the touch, bang, get in on his left foot. We make it 4 1, and we are pretty much secured our spot as the champions of Europe for this season. Uh oh. What? 
Really? I mean, you switch off for two seconds. And PSG just score like it's absolutely nothing. I hate playing against Mbappe on this game. He's so broken. Dagliafico. No, we are not conceding in the last minute. Oh, hang on. Okay, we can hit them on the counter-attack here. We can definitely do some damage on the counter-attack. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe. Can we find Deli Alli? Is the ball good enough? Yes, it is. 5-2. Deli Alli with two. St. Maximan with three. We have secured the W for Fulham in the Champions League final. And that should, realistically speaking, be that. I mean, they cut there we go. We have made Fulham the best team in the world in only season four. I know I say this pretty much every rebuild, but I've had so much fun rebuilding Fulham, man. This team, something else, man. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, smash that hell out to that subscribe button, turn that notification bell, so you never miss a video I upload. We are on the road right now to 6,000 subscribers, and the like goal for today's video is 250. If we can hit that, that would be incredible. That is all from me. It's been your boy, Goody. I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing afternoon, and until next time, I'll see you later.